So here is my first report. report <laughs> 10 o'clock in the morning in Texas is 4 o'clock in the afternoon in Nigeria. Texas is in the Nigeria is in the and it is six o'clock in Kampala, Uganda. Uh, Uganda Naigukpen. And it is eight thirty in the evening in India. So when I do a Zoom Bible study for pastors at ten o'clock in the morning at in the afternoon, on the evening of those of that same day, at the exact same time, we are studying the Bible together. Uh, a week and a half ago, I received an invitation to do a pastor's Bible study conference for three days for India. And so at 8 o'clock in the morning in Texas, it will be 6.30 in the evening in India, and they will be studying and I will be teaching at the same time. Texas <laughs> India Zoom. Bible studies for pastors is one thing that I do. Uh, I also have a website where pastors go for teaching materials. Uh, I also have a channel on YouTube and there are a hundred and ten teachings on that channel. YouTube has on channel channel na azale som khat lessons there to lai na omhi omhi. There have been more than nine hundred visits to those uh, places on YouTube since I began a year ago. Ah, tuma kum khat le chipan naka kipat to YouTube channel pen. Uh, Every day I do a post, a teaching for pastors, a small, short teaching. That goes out w through a system called, uh, it has its own name, and that's a computer related program. And then I take that and I relay it through WhatsApp to four different groups in Africa. Not very many people have computers in Africa, but almost everybody has a phone, an iPhone. So by using WhatsApp, I can give this teaching to many pastors and they can access it on their iPhone. Africa, Tamzon computer, and they have phone te, iPhone te, and they have a WhatsApp, because it's not, don't know, it's not, don't know, it's not, connection to the world. So Substack puts it out there for computer users and I relay it on to, through WhatsApp for phone users. So we're trying to use a modern technology to help us do the work of missions and ministry and training pastors and leaders. The teachings that are on the YouTube program are downloaded in Kampala by Salt 
TV, and they play it every Thursday and Friday for pastors in East Africa. YouTube ka tinte Africa kidong lo ina amaw so TV chi katunga niptak nisim nita nili nisim le nirang kadina amaw to bang ina na lak denuhi. So now you have a little window on the kinds of work that I'm doing, even though I'm in Texas, and I need you to pray for us so that when these messages go out, not only the technology operates, but people hear and hear with the ears of their spirit, and they understand, and they use these ideas for effective ministry. Texas akom zinzinang kana sebdan tuanan hi to imanina tunges sakun mite ina azabe kilo na alung simsungwa atend hi na dingin na tunget na kisaming. Now I wanted to bring my wife with me today, but she is recovering from a series of physical difficulties, and she was too weak and too much pain to make the trip. So I'm sorry she's not here. Ah, kasi to kung pay na puhang ama pen, ah pumpi. Adam lo na hangi na, Adam kang lai na, tanem lai men na tuning pay solo hi. So when you pray for the ministry that we're doing, also pray for her physical healing, so that we can continue to be useful to the Lord, like Psalm one says that our leaves will be fruitful and healthy even in old age. Ah. Kami ni sekarang itu nunggu sakit yang nak kaji, tidak pernah diingzong nunggu sakit tu akhirnya kau pasien nasib nak alai sengtu alat esok gen mak bangina kata aku hang tak kau tak ingat sem zau dingin kita menung. My report also includes an introduction of four people who are doing now the same thing that we taught them how to do. Ka kongkimesi nom nazar tu rai tak ingat. One of them is a man named Solomon who lives in Rwanda, but he has left Rwanda and he has gone to South Sudan to train pastors and Christian leaders. Solomon so pray for Solomon. Solomon had been tongue sack on. Another man is named Herman. He is also in Rwanda, and he travels around in the countryside training pastors how to be good Christian leaders. Ah, had been Herman na kichina, ama been Rwanda omina pastate koyda ni na makahu iswag dingchi ah sinasakina omlay taki. So we want to pray for Herman. There's a man named Pierre who lives in Kinshasa in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Kinshasa. Yeah, Kinshasa. What was his name? Pierre. So he is doing pastor's education so that there are pastors who have knowledge of the Bible. And then there's a man named Samuel Joshua. He lives in India, and he is training pastors. Samuel Joshua Akichi had zong India omina aman pastate ma atintan piahi. A week ago, he asked me, would I please help him? So that's why I'm going to be doing a Zoom meeting for three days for a special conference for the pastors that he's training. So when you pray for this missionary and the students and the people that we are working with, even though our numbers are not big numbers like 100 or 2,000, the numbers are more like 30 or 40. We are training leaders, so that means 30 or 40 churches, not just individuals. 
ke yaring thunong ngel sakut jang kana sepi te ari nong thunge sakun ko pen a mi mu na ka tam bia volo hang ina a som thum som li ka threng u jang ina mi be kilo ina makai pa pa ina por pi som thum por pi som li ai pa pa hi it is a great great joy for a teacher to see the students doing the same thing that the teacher did so it goes from the teacher to the students and then to the students of the students uh sia khati na to isang na pangte na e hi da no hi na ama sang na pangte jong ama hi dan ma to dan na hi suk suk pen uh lung da ma ma hi ing that's what's happening right here because 20 years ago this man was a student of mine and this church and the work that you're doing in Myanmar and in other places of the world weren't even happening yet. But God has blessed him and he's blessing you and you have fruit all over the world now. I was in the pastor's office and I saw the map and I saw lines going to other parts of the world. Influence, the gospel, prayer, and spiritual power going from this church to other places in the world. So that's my report. Topen ka gay report hi. And from regularly I would like to report to you what we are doing and the way that God is blessing so that you can pray accurately for the things that we're doing. Hiban kongen na pen ko septet helaw jin no zong tu a ti cha mate ong sak the ding to kalungong na hi. Now I would like to give you a teaching from the Bible that will help us, all of us, to be friends who help others. And we're going to use the story of Jonathan and David from the book of 1 Samuel to demonstrate how that friends can help friends. Samuel Masa Sunga Om Jonathan Le David Tung Tang Tu Tung Tonina Lom Tain Alom Te Kweda Na Hu Te Ding Chi Tu Ting Sangen Nomi Hang. So first I would like to talk a little bit about the life of David. Amasa Na David Di Nun Tang Na Gen Masa Nomiing. We'll let this be the beginning of the Bible record, and over there will be the end. In chapter 16 of 1 Samuel, the story of David begins. Samuel anoints David. Samuel ina David sathau ni lina. Fifteen chapters later, at the end of First Samuel, David becomes king. Even though he was anointed king thirteen years earlier, now he becomes the king over Judah. Ah, he first Samuel masa Samuel masa atop na chapter som lenga bang ukian kitjang ina David pen kumpi yung suaki. So. 15 chapters, 13 years, tells the story of the preparation for, of David from the time he was anointed until the time he became king. Then we move into the book of 2 Samuel. And chapter 1 through 10 tell the story of David's highly successful years. Ten chapters. Does anybody here know what happens in chapter 11? 
Chatha eleven nong tun chang ina bang piang chi ithe nom hiam. Na khu dong lam vo. What? Bang piang hiam o. De. David and Bathsheba have a an adulterous affair. David le Bathsheba ina no le pa mo nang bolu hi. So for 10 chapters, David has been highly successful, and then in chapter 11, he falls into sin. He akan bukti som som sunga David aguazoma malay tak ina som lekat nang tunjang ina ama mo na ongkai. And from chapter 11 up until the end of. I'm not sure where that part ends, but there's only 10 chapters that talk about David's highly successful years. He chapter Psalm begina David i guazona asang penaga na gan he. And then from chapter 11 until First Kings chapter one, we have David's difficult years as king. He is king. But because of the sin with Bathsheba, these are very difficult years for David. Samuel ni na som lekat pa na kumpi masate a chapter kat dong David i haksat na vive kigentahi. So he has an affair with Bathsheba. Then he has Uriah killed. You know Uriah. He's killed. Ah, Bathsheba to ong mo ina to kichanga Uriah ong tadina. Then Amnon, the son of David, rapes Tamar, his half sister. Ah, Amnonina amai David anu kibanglo sanggam mo. Ah, Am Amnon ong bangale ong buanina. And then Absalom kills Amnon. Absalomina Amnon ong. And Absalom flees to another country. Absalom pen gamdanga ong taina. Absalom returns and steals the hearts of the Israeli people from his father David because he wants to become the king. Agal ta na panong chia chang ina aman Israel mite lungtang ala ina lahi bangyam chile ama apa mo na. He leads in a rebellion against his father David. Aman apa ang lang pangina ang nungtay na? And Joab, the king, the chief general of David's army, kills Absalom. David ingal kam mang pa Joab ina Absalom ang tati. Then David returns to Israel, but there's another civil war takes place. David Israel tu akhirnya David Israel orang cia ina ayang ina agam sunggal mati boy na omhi. Years later, Adonijah, another son of David, wants to be the king. Adonijah kici David ita padang kadin kumping song nom leh lehi. Bathsheba comes to David and says, Why is Adonijah becoming the king? I thought Solomon was supposed to be the king. Ah. Bersih bang pai nak bahang adun raja pen kumpi suak ding hiam Solomon kumpi ding in kilom sains nak gini. So David quickly has Solomon anointed to be the king, and then a little after that David dies, and that's the end of David's story. Tuak kicang nak David na Solomon kumpi ding nak setahun ni nak tuak kicang amak si nak atau tu orang mani. The reason I'm telling you this is to say that it takes a long time. 13 years, 15 chapters to develop somebody for leadership, for godly leadership. He congen na hang pen, mi khat pasyan, mi zan makayong swati na dingi na, kum som le kum tum sung, chap ta som le nga sung, na ki bol na, a ki gin na te, ki mo te hi. So if anybody here wants to be a pastor or a missionary or a church or Christian leader, Expect to come through some training and some experiences in which God will prepare you. Hisunga polpi makai mission na sem nom kong yom le pasyani na ong ong bol na ding hun bol kadom ding china kiging hun. And when you get into ministry, 
be careful to stay righteous and holy and pure and not get involved in sinful things so that these fruitful, victorious, glorious years can be long and fruitful. Ministries one no mutang in a two man in a siang to win up, nom tenading una han chamun to a hile, a gap high not sort of a peep, but she not said looting you there. Because beginning with David's sin with Bathsheba began years of great difficulty and hardship and division, adversity and horrible things happening politically, internally in Israel. David in a hilaya no me tong mo hang in a agam agam huitale ama mimal ma ma huitale kichen na boy na haksan na gim na tampi ong piang hi. When the hand of blessing and anointing from God is lifted and we are exposed to evil spirits and evil forces, things do not go well for us. It's much better to live a holy, carefully disciplined spiritual life so that God's hand of anointing and power remains on us. So now you have a picture of David's life. David in Nuntang na alim mutating hiang. Now we're going to go back to these 15 chapters, these 13 years of David's preparation. David akibo preparation na ilay taki na hi chapter som lenga sung kum som le kum chum sung hun tem kat enki bing hiang. Samuel anointed David with oil as a symbol of the Holy Spirit coming on David for leadership. Soon after that, the court of King Saul called David into the court to play his harp and make nice music and worship to the Lord because an evil spirit from the Lord was troubling Saul. Saul in the David Kyang Payina, Doki Chang, David Saul in Sunga, music dum ding in a, Pasian Padding in a, Dohile, David Saul Sunga Om, Doi Tai Heading Aiman, Doran Adi Manuna, David Ong Samuhi. Samuel anointed David to become king, and then Saul invited David into the court so his training could begin. Samuelina, David sat down in a, to a kitchen in a, Saul in a, David on a ma in kumpin suang sami toy, toy men in a ma i training kipan tading. Then Goliath from Philistia said, "Send me a man who will fight with me." And David came against the giant and he threw a stone and hit the giant, boom, right on the head. David, David became famous. David And the crowds would sing. Saul has killed his thousands, but David has killed his tens of thousands. And Saul became very angry. He was jealous. He didn't like it that David was more successful and more famous than he was. Ama sang David amin tanzo kate chang na Saul ina onghazai na he ina. David, uh, so David began to, uh, Saul began to persecute David and try to kill him through spears and did things to try to kill David. David David ran to Ramah where Samuel lived to get help from Samuel. Samuel said, let's go to Nioth. That's where the school of the prophets is. So David went to Nioth. 
David pe Naioth a paina. Then David went to Nob. Nob is where the priests were. Uh, David pe to kitchen na Naioth a paina. To la ya ko mi am tin siam pit eom hi. But the priests could only give him a sword and some bread. They really couldn't help David in a, in a permanent way. I hang in a top Champitena, David Penn, Nam Sau Tenta Hale, Mo Toting Ama Aton to Ahu's old loading, Napo had been pes away. Then David has a secret meeting with Jonathan. Totang in a David and a Jonathan to Kimuna meeting Hanong Nesimuhi. And this is the event we're going to talk about. But, but Jonathan could not help David in a permanent way. Jonathan could, Jonathan could only help David escape. Jonathan na David pen aton tunga ding hu zoloa ay hang David aswa tang na ding atay kaya tay na ding hu tay. So David went to Adullam. Adullam was a cave where he hid from Saul. Uh, to kitchen na David ben Adoram home sunga uh, uh, Saul mate Saul na kacang agbuk na to uh, so home sunga pa hi 400 men from Israel joined David there and they became kind of a small army to Adoram una uh, Israel mi mi zalina David ong Paul pina amao gal gap neo khat ong piang hi in order to take care of his mom and dad, David took his mother and father down to Moab to give a place of safety for his mother and father. Do you remember who David's great-grandmother was? David P. Who is David's great grandmother? A pison of them Ruth, that's right. Yeah, Ruth, yay. So David had a background of a connection with Moab, and he took his mom and dad to the king of Moab. Will you let, protect my mom and dad because Saul is trying to kill me? David in to atang thoma bangina Moab mite to kizok na api hang in neina to amena anule pa. Later, the people of Zith told Saul, David is with us. If you will come, we will help you catch David and kill him. David ran to the Philistines and lived in Gath for a short time. David Ben Philistina Payina Tualaya Tom Hat Nungtahi. The people of the court didn't want David there. This is David, he's the one that killed Goliath. David, he's the one that killed. They sang songs about him. Saul has killed his thousands, but David has killed his ten thousands. We don't want David in our city. Tua Philistina Mitena. He pen David Ben Goliath at Hina. So David had to run away again. David, uh, Several years later, David is back in Philistia, trying to escape from Saul again. And David says, I will fight with you against Israel. You will see what a great warrior I am. <laughs> then the generals, the rulers of the armies of Philistia said, no, 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 we do not want David fighting with us against the, Phil against the Israelites because in the middle of the battle, he will change sides and join the Israelites and we will have double trouble. Uh, Philistine, Gal Gammang, Pana, Ey Lama David, De Lohi Hang, Bang Yam Chile, Gal Kido Lai Tak Ama, Alusim Khelzeo Dinga, Eten Haksana Nibang. Israel 
So David returned to Ziklag. David Do you remember what happened at Ziklag? Ziklag bang piang chi ite yam. Anybody? Hey kham yam. The Amalekites had attacked Ziklag while David was with the Philistines. David pen Philistian te to omlai ta kina Amalek Amalek mi te na Ziklag pen an na dohuhi. All the women wives all the children, all the belongings had been taken and the city had been burned by the Amalekites. Why am I telling you all of these stories about the troubles that David experienced during this time when God was training him and preparing him to become the king. Why am I telling you this? Because there were many, many difficult troubles in David's life. David learned patience. David in a long dwelling sin here. He learned to be kind to those who were unkind to him. Ama tunga achitak lo te tunga aman diktan na apiak he ding sin here. He learned to trust in God in the deep dark valley. Amial alahuay zang le am lai takina pasian muan ding aman sin here. And when you read the Psalms and you see how that David trusted God and loved God through all of his difficulties. Now you see how God uses trouble and tribulation and difficulties to make us mellow and sweet so that we're not fighting but that we love people and we want to be friends with them. In the middle of all of these experiences, one of these incidents I told you was a meeting, a secret meeting that David had with Jonathan. And during that meeting, it's recorded in chapter 20, 1 Samuel chapter 20. Samuel meeting Jonathan David In that secret meeting, meeting Jonathan said something that was absolutely wonderful. Jonathan is a loyal, faithful, consistent friend to David. Jonathan pen David adding na achitak amuan huay long huay mama kati. Jonathan had more reasons than anybody else to not like David. Jonathan David What reason would Jonathan have to not like David? David Jonathan was the next king in line when his father Saul would die. Jonathan would become the king. Who had been anointed to become the next king? David Ben Kumpi Kumpi David. So Jonathan could have been jealous of David and said, Oh 
No, I don't like this David. He's more popular. He will become the king. I'm supposed to become the king. I'm the next in line to my father Saul. And Jonathan could have hated David. David Ben Saul kitchen kum beating in acts at how can it pay my bangina, Jonathanina, Hazaina, Hippa Pen, Kamunong to Ding Hitina, Tutam people let a what tainted in Tutam Pium cutting he. Just like his father Saul wanted David dead, Jonathan could also have wanted David to be dead. A pass all in David a seating a day, my bangina, Jonathan in zone, David Sile, they take Tobangina to him cutting he. But what was Jonathan's attitude toward David? I hang in Ahilaya, David to Kisana, Jonathan, Ilung Simpuak, Bangimokiam. Jonathan is an example of a faithful, loyal friend. Jonathan Penn, a chitak, Mate, a long hoite, Hadi, again, Tena, Himoki. And in verse four, in this secret meeting, Jonathan said to David, Whatever you want me to do, I will do for you. Jonathan na akimu na wa David tungo banggen hiam chile nagen peu peu nang adingin kong hisak ding hi chile. Are you getting the picture of Jonathan's faithfulness and genuine love for his friend David? Can you see how that this was an absolutely wonderful? demonstration of love for Jonathan to say whatever you want me to do I will do for you Jonathan David can nongen bang bang kong hi sak ding hi achi changina amai alom pa i na i na man to i na le a lom hoi khada hi na lim na mu thayu hiam are you getting the picture i mu thayam you understand what i'm saying here it tell hiam chi e Jesus doesn't use these exact words, but Jesus loves us. He is our friend, and he says something very similar. In John 14, 14, Jesus says to us, John you may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. Are you getting the picture? That's friendship. I will do for you what you need me to do. I will do for you what you want. I will do for you. You are my friend. I will help you. Now, what does Jesus expect from us? Jesus says, If you love me, keep my commandments. <laughs> if you love me, do what I tell you to do. Do you see what Jesus is proposing here? Ask me anything in my name and I will do it for you. Whatever you want me to do, I will do for you. And you keep my commandments and I will give you, uh, I, uh, what I want you to do is to keep my commandments if you love me. So if we keep his commandments, we are doing for Jesus what Jesus wants us to do. So Jesus says to us, and we say to Jesus, whatever you want me to do, I will do for you. That's good friendship. Wouldn't you like to have a lot of friends who would say that to you? Well, I have an idea for us. 
not only can we say this to Jesus, whatever you want me to do, I'll do for you. Jesus kiang beka nang hisop nong hisang no bangbang hi ning chilowina. Besides Jesus, outside of Jesus, my best friend is my wife. Ah, Jesus kiang ina kiyading ina kalomoy pen pen kasihi. But outside of Jesus, besides Jesus, my wife's best friend is standing right here. I am he. Jesus kiang ina kasihi lomoy pen zong kehi ng hilaya ding hi. So I will say to Shar, whatever you want me to do, I will do for you. Kasi kaya nga, nung sepsang no bang bang, nang ading ning kahit ding kasem ding hi. And she will say to me, whatever you want me to do, I will do for you. Aman zong, kaya ito nga, nung sepsang no bang bang, kasem ding hi, nang ading ng ding hi. You know that my wife has been sick for a year and a half since we came back from Kampala, Uganda. She has been in bed sick with a broken hip, with cancer, with uterine cancer, with uh, an operation, and with multiple problems, chemotherapy and neuropathy, all kinds of problems. During that time, I have learned what this verse means. Whatever you want me to do, I will do for you. Compare Uganda pan kongcia ujang na kasi damlo ina gu kita na isong ina kensa ay tungo na ong nei na haksanalian piat tun lai tuak lai taki na tuak hi tu nong sepsang no bang bang kasem ding hi ji kana gen hi. When we husbands and we wives learn to have this kind of attitude and teamwork and partnership, nothing could stop us because. Each of us has a loyal, faithful friend. Unconditionally, will help that person. Ainu pi papi te hit hubang na kalakat ikici na kule. Aite ko may na ong ong nong kay sak telo ding hi bang yam chile. Aite pen lom hoy pen da na kisom te iman na. And if a church is filled with husbands and wives who think like this and act like this. Think of the power and the fruitfulness and the usefulness and the testimony this church could be for God's glory. Hipol pisunga hibang tu again nupi papi tampiyum nagle hipol pihang ina pasyen mintang di na ngap pading hihang. Hallelujah. Amen. I see some young people here. Hilaya kang no mel hoy hiu hiu pol kat fong inen muing. Are your are your mothers and fathers here? Okay, your mothers and fathers here? Some, some of you, not all of you. What if every young person, high school or college student, junior high, what if all of us learned to say to our parents, whatever you want me to do, I'll do for you? Hilai am kang nau te ako mapewina. Inulepate hi nga, inulepate o nung hisang no bang bang kasem ding hi chilem. You know the Bible says children are to obey their parents. Honor your father and your mother, for this is right, and live long in the land. The devil does not want us to work together. He wants us to be fighting with each other and arguing and saying, my way is best, my idea is best. But God wants us to be able to say, brother, whatever you want me to do, I will do for you. Satanina ate pen, kitong tong ding, ong de ina na isep kop telo te na ding na tampiyong sem no mi ayang pasiyan ina ate pen sanggamo Nasib no bang bang, nadi bang bang, nadi kasem dengan ciri yang dehi. I am a trainer of missionaries. Kepen missionary itu, atin tanah pia pan tak pahing. My job is to train missionaries and pastors and Christian workers. Ah, kena sebina missionary itu, pastor itu, ah tapi ro makai itu, ah pan tak ding. But if the Holy Spirit were to use today and in your life. What Jonathan said to David, can you imagine how that just that idea and that mentality and that kind of cooperation and partnership would make us into a team of influencers for the sake of the gospel? People would look at us and say, 
How do you have such a wonderful marriage? How do you enjoy your children so much? How is it that God is blessing you? Tunya kas yang tone ite ongom pi na Jonathan te tang tuban khat le khat ke huin ke pan pi na pasien min thang sakin leng mi te na bang hang nang nang koi chi le hi bang ina nan in kon nuwa ma chidam na hiam chi na ong mu thei ding hi Now of course when we ask God to do something for us we submit our requests to his will because he's wiser than we are Pasien keng na khat inget inget chang ina e inget pen pasien i a chunga When Jesus said, "Whatever you ask me to do in my name, I will do for you," in John 14:14, he was not talking about you can have a nice car or you can have an airplane or you can have a new house. That's not the kind of thing he was talking about. He was talking about ministry as we work together and be fruitful for the kingdom of God. That's the context. Zaisuina John Somleli Somleli na a kaimin tonong ngit pepe kong pedi nga chichang na inhoy lohoy te a fonghoy no no te to te angen hizu lozoy na pasyan na sep na sunga ina sep kom na sunga ama min to ingeta isep kom ding to pen to la siang towi ade na iso hi. I have been coming here to this church and ministering from time to time for a number of years and I like being identified with this group. I am honored when this man says, Brother Byers, we want you to come and share with us in our church. We have a spirit of cooperation between us. Several months ago, he had a relative visit here from Japan and from uh, Myanmar. Uh, he said to me, we'd like to come and visit you. And, and I said, whatever you want me to do, I will do for you. That's my attitude. And I looked at his map in his office and I gave him a little picture and I said, I'd like to be one of your missionaries so that you'll pray for us. And he said, whatever you want me to do, I'll do for you. He didn't use those exact words, but that's the kind of spirit that builds churches, that builds the kingdom of God, that builds couples, that builds families, so that we're working together, partnership to the glory of God. That's the kind of attitude that God will bless. So let's pray. Lord, thank you for this pastor who has a spirit, the attitude of a servant. Help us all to learn from his example. More than that, however, thank you that Jesus models for us the attitude, the spirit of a servant. And took our sin and our shame, our pain and our sickness on himself and served us because he says to us, whatever you ask me to do, I will do for you. Help us to learn this wonderful secret, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.